Kaibigan mga kapatiran, welcome sa ating God's Word for Today devotional this morning and patuloy tayo sa ating devotional sa Galatians chapter 3 verses 1 to 5. And as usual, I will read this sa ating Tagalog na Biblia. Uhangal na mga taga-Galasya, sino ang gumayuma sa inyo? Sa harapan ng inyong mga mata ay hayagang ipinakita si Heso Kristo na ipinako sa cross. Ang tanging bagay na nais kong matutunan mula sa inyo ay ito. Tinanggap man ninyo ang Espiritu sa pamamagitan ng mga gawa ng kautusan o sa pamamagitan ng pakikinig sa pananampalataya. Napakahangal ba ninyo? Nagpasimula kayo sa Espiritu, ngayon ba ay nagtatapos kayo sa laman? Inyo bang naranasan ang maraming bagay na walang kabuluhan? Kung tunay nga na ito ay walang kabuluhan, ang Diyos ba ay nagbibigay sa inyo ng Espiritu at gumagawa ng mga himala sa gitna nyo sa pamamagitan ng inyong pagtupad sa mga gawa ng kautusan o sa pagkikinig sa pananampalataya? Now, there is this question ni Paul sa mga Christian sa Galatia. Napakahangal ba ninyo? Are you so foolish? And that question is not only to them but to everyone ang naging bahagi ito sa salita ng Panginoon in order for us to search our hearts whether we are this kind of people just like the Galatians. Are we so foolish? Now, let's see what happened here. Ating natandaan na si Pablo po ay nagsasabi na kung ang ating righteousness is, ob- is obtained by fulfilling the law, then Christ's death is in vain. Walang kabuluhan ang kamatayan ni Panginoon Su Kristo. At that is precisely what he was emphasizing here as he begins sa kanyang epistle sa chapter 3. Paul here was very sure that the believers at Galatia understood clearly the gospel. Hindi nagkulang ang pag-proclaim, pag-present ni Pablo sa gospel. If we read chapter 1, we know that he was very clear that he was presenting the true gospel as differentiated from the another gospel which is not the gospel at all. As he introduced Jesus unto them, he had clearly portrayed him as the one crucified para sa ating kaligtasan. Uh, I think Paul had stressed this so much because in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 2, ito din ang kanyang central message to the church at Corinth. Sabi niya doon, For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So with this, mababasa natin, magkikita natin na ang focus at pinaka-importante talaga ni Pablo is to proclaim Jesus Christ as crucified. Nothing more, nothing else, nothing less. However, these believers were dissuaded to believe that their righteousness by faith in Christ as the work of the Spirit was incomplete. Sila po ay parang ginagayo, makay tanong niya, are you bewitched? Parang ginagayo ba ba kayo? That they believe that ang kaligtasan, true faith in Christ alone, plus nothing, was incom- incomplete. They had to work or observe the law. Kasi po, as we know, marami pong mga false brethren, they called themselves circumcision party, who introduced this teaching, false teaching, inside the church. Kaya nga si Pablo, hindi po nag dadalawang isip, he did not hesitate to call them foolish. Bakit sila po ay napakahangal? Kasi po una sa lahat, believing that we are going to do and observe the law in order to be saved, dagdag sa panampalatayan natin kay Kristo is an insult to Christ. Because by doing so, as Paul pointed out in Galatians chapter 2 verse 21, they nullified the grace of God. For if righteousness were through the law, 
then Christ died for no purpose. Ibig sabihin, it's either or. You cannot mix the two. It's either you believe the law and perfect it, or you believe on what Christ did at the cross, which was the perfection of the um, sacrifice for our sins. It's either or. Hindi po pwedeng pagsasamasamahin ng dalawa. Salvation, therefore, is by grace alone without the works of the law. Kaya nga sabi ni Pablo, kung ang kaligtasan natin ay magawa natin by doing the law, hindi na kailangan siya mamatay sa cross. It's useless. But because we cannot follow the law, we cannot be righteous by doing the law. He came down because He loves us. The Lord, the Father loves us. He gave His only begotten Son to die at the cross in order to give us the righteousness, to provide us this righteousness, this grace of salvation. Pangalawa is, it was not based on good sin, sins. Ang ginawa ng mga Christians sa Galatia not, it was not only an insult, but it was not based on a good sense. They were not thinking at all. Parang they were victims of a spell. They were bewitched. They had not thought it over. Kung ang kaligtasan ay nagumpisa sa spirit o galing sa Panginoon, yung tanong ni Pablo, will it be perfected or completed in the flesh? Ang sinimula ba ng Panginoon ay tatapusin ng tao? Definitely, it's not. It's like a diver. You know, imagine a diver who dives underwater. And after a while, underwater, nag-decide siya na itapo niya yung kanyang scuba. Scuba means self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Yung instrumento na makahinga siya doon. Itapo niya in order to keep himself underwater because he thought or he believes that he can survive underwater without the scuba. Now, can he do that? Of course he cannot. It's a ridiculous thought. Hindi ba? So ganyan po ang mga tao or mga Christian who believes that God who started in the spirit yet can forsake him and then he will continue the Christian life through their flesh. Ang ibig sabihin mga kapatid, mga kaibigan is what God has begun, if we receive it from God, it, is, it will be sustained by God. If we receive it by faith, it will be sustained by faith. By grace, ang ating salvation, the keeping of our salvation also is also by grace. Since we receive our salvation by faith in God alone, He does also the safekeeping of our salvation. Maganda ang sinasabi ni Pedro sa kanyang sinusulat sa 1 Peter 1, verse 3 to 5. And let me read. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So si Pedro nagsasabi na ang ating kaligtasan ay pinipreserve, ginagwardyahan ng Panginoon mismo. Let's not be foolish to believe the lies of the devil. Let's not be foolish to believe that we can keep our salvation, for we cannot. It's God who keeps our salvation and we trust in Him that what He said, He's going to do it. Let's just allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts that we will continue to live an authentic life. You know, kung may tunay na buhay tayo sa puso natin, may isa buhay natin ang pagkakristyano. That is why we always repeat that the Christian life is not just difficult. It is very, it is impossible because it's Christ living in us or the Holy Spirit living in us. And He is the one who is our life. So let's remember this. The devil will deceive us, but the truth remains that it's not us, but 
Christ who lives in us and he will continue to live in us. And let's allow the Holy Spirit to work his, his um, work of sanctifying us or setting us apart unto Christ. The famous um, evangelist Dwight L. Modi said, pertaining about this deception from Satan, he said, I believe hundreds of Christian people are being deceived by Satan now on this point, that they have not got the assurance of salvation just because they are not willing to take God at his word. So Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me continue reading. But a man said to me, no one has come back and we don't know what is in the future. It is all dark and how can we be sure? Thank God. Christ came down from heaven and I would rather have him coming as he does right from the bosom of the Father than anyone else. We can rely on what Christ says and he says, he that believeth on me shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Not that we are going to have it when we die, but right here today. So, ang tanong ko sa ating lahat this morning is, have you placed your trust on the Lord Jesus Christ? And you believe on what Christ has done at the cross was the perfect sacrifice for your sins. Do you believe that the testimony of God's word is true? So, ang ating panalig, hindi po sa ating faith. It's not about how strong is your faith, but the object of your faith. Who is the object of your faith? Katulad sa akin ngayon, I'm sitting on the chair. Now, I put my whole weight on the chair. If I say, hindi akong balaglag sa sahig, I'm not bragging, I'm just telling the truth that this chair kept me from falling to the floor. Ibig sabihin, when we say, I am saved in Christ, we are not bragging. We are just saying a, a truth, a statement that is real, that we are saved not because of our good works, not because we are good, but because of Christ. Because what he did at the cross, when he said it is finished, it is completed perfectly. I hope that you will not doubt about your salvation in Christ. And as he, be, he saved us, he is going to guard our salvation. Let us just allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts in order that he will set us apart unto Christ. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, salamat for this morning. Again, for your word. Lord, it's a strong uh, statement against the church or against the Christians of Galatia that Paul did, said for being foolish. But indeed, that's the reality, Lord, for those who are deceived to believe that they can live the Christian life by their flesh. I pray to Father that you will keep us from this deception. I pray that the truth will set us free, that indeed, if Christ has saved us, he will save us unto the uttermost. For what he said in your, in, in your word, in the Bible, that settles it, Lord. That whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That whosoever believes in Christ shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to work in the hearts of people, opening their heart, that they will be able to see the beauty of the gospel, and they will believe on Jesus and be saved on the fully. A lot of them, Lord, are our loved ones, friends, colleagues. I pray, Lord, that they too will receive Christ as their Savior. Thank you for, we know you are going to answer our prayers exceedingly and abundantly today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.